Hi everyone, Dr. Lena Michaels here, and I'm gonna do a card reading and a guided meditation for you. And I wanna mention that this card reading, I'm an intuitive card reader, so whatever I, whatever cards I pull will be relevant for you because the cards are able to be, they're able to change and they're able to change and be what is helpful for you whenever you watch or listen to this video. Now it sounds strange, but that's the way it works. And so I'm going to talk for just a few minutes. I never know what I'm going to say. I'm never preparing anything. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat is already starting to uh, need to be clear. That happens sometimes. Mm. But <clears throat> we're coming up to the equinox, okay? On September 21st is the day of the year that it is equally light and equally dark. It's the fall equinox. So metaphorically and spiritually and etherically, what that means is your dark side, your shadow side needs to be addressed. If you haven't addressed your shadow side, you need to do it. What's your shadow side? Your shadow side is the part of yourself that is the things you don't like about yourself and it's the things that you project on other people and say, oh, I don't like he or she, or I don't like them because they're blah, blah, blah. They're exhibiting this, that, or the other. Well, if you haven't done your shadow side work, what that other person or what that group is exhibiting is a part of yourself that you have cast off and projected onto someone else so that you can criticize it because you don't want to own it. So doing shadow work is very important. And as we come into the time of year where the dark becomes more and more prevalent as the days go on and the light becomes less and less, it's very important for people to address their shadow sides. Now, the shadow sides come out in your relationships. They come out especially in groups, uh, whether it's a creative group, whether you're in a play or whether you're in a band or uh, any kind of committee or a board of directors or a, a, a company that has a group of employees, <clears throat> shadow sides come out in groups. And they come out in a group situation where people act out unconsciously their family of origin darkness. They don't know they're doing it, it's subconscious, but it comes out all over the place. And it's very important. Ideally, in an ideal world, anyone you're in a group with or in a creative project with will have already done their own personal work, but a lot of times people haven't. And you can always tell when people start behaving badly <laughs> and you start to see that they are projecting onto someone else a part of themselves that they don't like. They might be calling someone else incompetent. They might be calling someone else disorganized. Whenever you call anyone else anything, it's really important to look at yourself and say, hmm, is there a part of me that is this thing too? And that's why I really dislike that person who's exhibiting that behavior. It's something to look at. And as we come into the equinox where we have more dark than we've had all summer, and we're gonna have more and more dark as the winter months come in, the shadow sides are gonna be coming out. So this is a great time to start to go within and do some shadow side work. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look online, there's lots of information there, or find a good coach or therapist, ideally a licensed person. Coaches don't have to be licensed, but a licensed clinician who knows what they're talking about and is strong enough to call you on your crap because it doesn't really do much good to get into therapy with someone where you just talk, 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 and then you leave and then you come back next week and you talk, 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 talk. It's like you go in there and you vomit up all this stuff and then you come back the next week and you vomit up more. You really want to be working with someone who is solution focused and able to get into the trenches with you and help call you on what you're doing and help you become consciously aware of those subconscious pieces of darkness that are contaminating your life and your relationships and keeping you from what you should be having, what you are divinely meant to have, which is goodness, happiness, healthy relationships, and a lot of joy. You will also find that someone who does not have their shadow side addressed and has not done that work will be trying to take away your joy. 
they just don't like you to be happy about things. They wanna take away your joy. So if there's something you enjoy doing, they'll try and create a reason why you can't do it anymore. Because something, they'll head trip you about something that is not even a valid reason so that that thing that you enjoy is taken away from you. I'm talking in vague terms here, but think about it, okay? Uh, I'm gonna use a, a, a scenario here, it just came into my head. Let's say there's a couple in a relationship, okay? And he likes to go, let's say he likes to go out and watch football with the guys one night a week or something, okay? And she, and that's joyful for him. He bonds with his, you know, friends that he's had for a long time, he's a great time. They yell, they scream, they eat snacks, they watch the game. And his girlfriend or his wife doesn't like that she is being left alone on those nights and that he's going out with someone else going out with the guys and hanging out with the guys. So because she hasn't, if she hasn't done her own work on her own dark side abandonment issues, she's not gonna be consciously aware that that's what's happening. She's gonna try and undermine and make him feel guilty about the fact that he wants to go do something without her, okay? Or let's say he goes on motorcycle trips and she's gonna try and head trip him into the fact that he's selfish and doing his own thing and he's leaving her home alone with the kids, whatever. If she hasn't done her shadow side work and addressed her own darkness and her the parts of herself that aren't real wonderful, like feeling scared and abandoned when she's alone and when someone isn't paying a lot of attention to her, then she's gonna guilt trip him so that he can't have that joy. Start looking at your relationships and it will also happen in groups. If you're doing a play with someone or if you're in a band with someone and someone's really having a good time with a certain song, maybe there's someone else in the band that says, you know, that doesn't really fit our image. I don't think we should do that. When the one person is having such a great time doing it, but the person who is trying to take away their joy doesn't really realize because it's subconscious, they don't really realize that it's their dark side that is stepping in and wanting to take away the joy from someone else. So whenever someone is trying to take away joy from you, really look deeply at the situation, look below the surface. I always like to look below the surface and it's kind of like when you're in a swimming pool and people are playing you know, swimming pool volleyball, you see all this action above the water, go below. See what's going on below the surface. That's when you see what's really going on, okay? Maybe somebody's kicking somebody else or whatever but you don't see it up there, okay, on the surface appearance. You have to go below. Don't look at the surface appearance. So look at all your relationships and just go deeper, deep, 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 deep. Go to the root of things and see what's really going on. So we're moving into the equinox, September 21st, okay? And we're also moving into Libra at the same time. Libra is the scales. It's all about being balanced, okay? Balance, balance, balance. Are we in Libra now? Actually, let me see. Leo, 22nd. Yes, we're still in Libra. We're moving out of Libra into Scorpio. Very important. Why is that? Scorpio is about secrets. Scorpio is about mm, undercurrents. Scorpio is about in the card of the um, Major Arcana. We, it came up last week. It's the one where there's the moon and there's a dog and a wolf howling at the moon and there's a scorpion ready to sting, okay? So that's kind of what Scorpio is about, you know? I'm not trying to bad rap all you Scorpios out there because I know a lot of wonderful Scorpios. My mother's a Scorpio and I adore her. But look below the surface. We're coming in out of Libra. We'll be in Libra when we have the equinox, but we're coming out of Libra and going into Scorpio, okay? So just be conscious and be aware of everything and look deeply. Don't take things on surface appearance, okay? All right, let's see what's going on with the cards. Now, as you know, the cards are always drawn on camera. I don't know what they're gonna be. And I don't go according to any theory or book or any teaching of what the cards mean because I just channel what the cards mean in the moment. I, I have been working with the cards since I was a teenager. When I was in graduate school, I actually did a paper on using tarot cards in psychotherapy in the psychotherapy session. And when I had my office, I often would you use the cards in psychotherapy for a session if, if indicated and if the person was open to it. 
I had all these things on the shelf in my office, and so if they noticed them and said something, I knew they were open to using those kinds of tools in their own personal growth process, but I never laid any trips on anybody. So, you know, if I saw you in the past and you're watching this right now and it never came up, it's because you didn't notice everything on the shelf and you didn't bring it up. Oh, okay, here we go. But we're gonna bring it up right now. We're gonna see what's going on. I'm starting to get really, really warm right now. So I know something's happening. <sighs> Cut the cards. All right, let's see what we got here, okay? Oh, something wonderful. Something wonderful is coming. How exciting. Let me move these things out of the way here. And I like to lay everything out so when we go into the guided meditation, these cards are the roadmap for the guided meditation. So we're gonna talk about that, but I'm gonna choose another card, okay? By the way, the cards always create a story and a narrative. We're gonna start with this. This is a wands card. Wands have to do with creativity. Wands have to do with art. They have to do with music. They have to do with coming up with creative ideas and thinking outside the box for solutions to come to you. <clears throat> and this is about something coming out of nowhere that's creative. So a magical thing that comes to you, an opportunity, possibly in the creative realm or an opportunity for you to be more creative than you have been in trying to find a solution to a situation. <clears throat> When I start to go do this work, my throat needs clearing, my eyes start watering, I start yawning. And that's just a releasing process that happens. So that's what's happening. It's starting to happen right now. I also get hot. I also start heating up. That's why I always have ice water, even if it's in the middle of the winter. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna cut the cards again, just so you can see that um, here we go. It's hard to shuffle them when I'm holding them up like this, so I just cut them. Next. Okay, this is the Eight of Pentacles. This is someone who's working very hard at their craft. And I'll very focused, I'll tell you about that too. And the next one is just gonna be right after that. That's what I'm getting the guidance to do. Oh, okay, it's uh, dance time, party time. Three of Cups, okay. All right, so I'm gonna put these cards aside right now. We're gonna talk about what we just pulled. <clears throat> you know, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the rest of the cards and then I'll just tell you a story about everything. I'll just pull it all together for you, okay? So here we go. Next card popping up is going to be, well, let's choose a God card. No, we'll do a God card at the end. Okay, next one is gonna be Daily Guidance from the Angels. And let's see what we got here. We're going to choose a card from this deck. We're not choosing anything. The cards are being chosen for us to give us the most information and guidance to everyone who's watching or listening when they're watching or listening. By the way, if you have a dilemma or something you want clarity on or direction, think about what that is right now before I even start talking about the cards, okay? Think about what you want clarity or direction on. If you don't have anything specific, by the way, I'm talking quickly right now. You'll see that my pace changes when we start going into trance. But when I feel that there's a lot to talk about, my voice kind of moves along rapidly. And so even if you don't have anything specific, just say, give me some direction and some guidance and some suggestion uh, about what's going on in my life right now. Okay, that's totally fine. But if you have a specific thing, it's good to have that in mind, okay? Here we go. Okay. Relationship, wasn't I just talking about that? Okie dokie, we're gonna put that aside now. I'm kind of doing it a little different this time, just because that's what I'm guided to do. Pull all the cards and then tell you a story. All right, next we're gonna go to this one. And See who shows up here in the Archangels. These angels have specific names. And qualities. Here we go. And, oh, kind of matches what I'm wearing right now, right? All this gold, red, orange thing going on. Feeling very uh, harvesty, 
was at Trader Joe's earlier and everything is pumpkin this and pumpkin that. <laughs> and I was wearing a uh, kind of a pumpkin colored corduroy shirt. So I just felt right in tune with the pumpkin energy. Here we go. Oh, I love this card. Look at that guy. He's stunning. Claire audience. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Claire audience. Claire audience is hearing guidance. Okay. Or messages. It's one of the Claire's, you know, there's Claire audience, Claire cognizance, Claire sentience. Okay. So boy, I'm really warm. I'm so hot right now. Jeez. Uh, well, I've got the back door open too, but boy, I'm really just so hot all of a sudden. Okay, last deck. I might have to get up and open the door even more and kind of move it back and forth a little bit. But I'm going to pull the rest of the cards first. All right, here we go. Last deck, and then I'm going to choose a God card. Well, I'm not going to choose it. I'm going to open the deck and see what happens. All right. I'm going to choose one more. We're not choosing. I keep saying choose, but I'm not. You see, I'm just cutting, and whatever shows up is what shows up. And this is the card that's showing up right now. Here we go. And this one is apologize. Okay. So we're going to talk about all these. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to read you the narrative. I'm going to choose a God card. Open the box anyway and see what happens if I choose... And, oh, well, that's the card. <laughs> oh, you know what? This came up last week. I'll read it to you, but I'm not going to use it tonight. I have no fear, for you are with me. Your light and your love guide and protect me. I'm not going to use it because we used it last week. I'm going to stick it back in here, far in the deck. And then I'm going to take these out. And just do this, and this, and this, and this is it. Okay, what's your vision? Imagination is a preview of life's coming attractions. And the back of it is, I am not always what I think I can. Oh, I'm not always what I think I am, but what I think, wait a minute. I don't have my glasses on. I am not always what I think I am, but what I think I am. Does that make sense? I am not always what I think I am, but what I think I am. Oh, okay. I am not always what I think I am, but what I think I am. There we go. What's your vision? Okay, so we're gonna put that aside and I'm gonna get up and get some more cold air in here because I'm really, really warm. I'm like burning up. And I shouldn't be, because it's really not really hot out right now. Right, Luna? My God. I'm going to move this French door back and forth a little bit. Get some air in here. I feel if I'm over here. No. Let's see, can I feel it? I'm sorry, I'm just, I gotta get myself some cool air here because I'm just so hot. I hope this isn't too loud in the background. Yeah, I can feel it now. Okay. Oops. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay. Let's get this all set up again. Yeah, that's much better. Oh, man. So hot. Ah, okay, I've got the back door open. I've got the fans going. So, 
Let's hear the story about what this is, okay? So, I haven't done it like this before for you guys, so. All right, this was the first card that came up. This is something wonderful coming out of nowhere in a very creative way, okay? Thinking outside the box to get a solution. And it's just going to come to you. It's gonna be like a flash of light. You're gonna get it, whatever it is. The solution to your dilemma, guidance for your situation, whatever it is. You have been working hard. You've been focusing and working really hard and you've been very, very busy, very busy in the earth trips, in the earth realm, okay? Also, it's time to celebrate. Have some fun, get some balance. You know how I talked about the equinox? The fall equinox is about balance, equal light, equal dark. Don't work so hard, okay? Don't work so hard. Have some fun. Go out with the girls. If you're a guy, go out with the guys. Go out with your Girls go out with guys, guys go out with girls. Anyway, have a great time. This is dancing and celebrating, okay? And cups have to do with emotions, and this is a three. So it's very creative, and it's enjoyable, and it's kind of like reaping the harvest. Look at the pumpkin there. See that? It's kind of like celebration time. All that work you've been doing, okay? But definitely keep your eye open for something coming out of nowhere, all right? Next relationship ta-da okay now this is about your primary relationship is with yourself and with god and every other relationship follows from there to attract heal or balance a relationship then snuggle more closely with your loving creator kind of like god is my boyfriend you know what i'm talking about <laughs> as you feel safe and loved within so shall your other relationships bloom and prosper Okay, if you don't have a spiritual connection, you're gonna be always feeling like you're like looking for something, looking for a person, looking for a partner, looking for something. If you have a spiritual connection and you are connected to the divine, whatever you wanna call it, by whatever name you're comfortable with, you're gonna feel more whole. And by the way, if you feel more whole, you are attracting a more whole person to be your partner or more whole people to be around all right if you're walking around empty you're going to attract empty people and they're going to act out your dysfunction all over you claire audience archangel zadkiel notice the loving guidance you hear in your mind from other people okay you will get messages from other people that may not even be anyone you interact with on a regular basis. You could get a message from someone at the checkout counter at Whole Foods. You could get a message from turning the radio on and having a message just come on in the car. That, that happens to me a lot with music, actually. I'll be thinking about something, I'll need an answer to something, and I'll turn the car on and a song will come on, and the line in the song will give me the answer to the dilemma or the direction. The weirdest thing happens in my car. My, I mean, in my life in general, weird things happen. But I often will get into my car and my car radio will start playing something on its own when the radio is not even on. It'll just start playing something. And it's not even, I didn't even turn it on. It'll, it'll, it's usually playing something from my phone that I haven't been listening to. So it might play something on YouTube or it might play something in my sound library. When my phone is not even tuned to that station, I will get in the car and it will come through my car radio, something from my iTunes library or from YouTube. It's the craziest thing. I don't know how that happens. I don't know why it happens. I don't know how it happens but it's usually some kind of a message for me. Last card, apologize, okay? I'm gonna actually read to you what is in the guidebooks of these cards. Let's start with um, relationship, okay? The first card was relationship. 
having a relationship with your creator or a higher power, whatever you want to call it, by whatever name is most comfortable to you. I'm going to read to you what's in here because a lot of times what's in here gives you a new insight. Right, Luna? Right, I know. Okay, this card signals that you're entering a more positive phase in your relationships. As the picture on the card shows, you're now out of the forest. See that? And entering an area filled with light and beauty. Like the angel portrayed on the card, you just need to hang on a little while longer. Hang on. Here are some additional meanings. The answer to your question lies within your relationship. Now, could be your relationship with your significant other, could be your relationship with your higher power, okay? Trust your feelings about your current relationship and act accordingly. The angels are helping you manifest a wonderful new relationship. Send light, love, and angels to your present relationship. A positive transition is occurring in a current relationship, which could include a healthy ending. You know, recently I was talking to someone privately who was very concerned about a relationship. This person is actually engaged to be married. And this person has been having gnawing feelings. This is a long-term relationship. They've been together for a few years. They're in their mid to late 30s, and a lot of time has been put into this relationship. However, there have been gnawing feelings that maybe, mm, maybe it's not the right thing, and the wedding is supposed to happen next spring, but the person was talking to me and wanting a session about it to get clarity on it, because the person is not that interested in planning the wedding and is wondering if they're making a mistake. This is a little, let me turn this around a little bit. Uh, wondering if they're making a mistake. So um, that's kind of what that card's about. So you know who you are if you're watching this. It's about sometimes a healthy ending, bringing the angels in to bring a positive close to the time that you've spent with this person and the investment and energy you put into this relationship. This is not a mistake. And getting out of the relationship and not having the marriage is not a mistake. It's, it's not, it has not been a waste of time for you to be with this person. It's been part of your growth to get you to the place that you are right now where it's time to move on and you will find another partner. You will find another partner. It might not happen overnight. Don't be concerned about the age thing. You know, the fact that you are in your mid to late 30s and you're not married and you want to be and you thought you were going to be, just trust the process, okay? So that's one aspect of that card right there. Um, and also, it could be the beginning of a new relationship that you yourself have, whoever you are. <sighs> See? Um, it's releasing. That you yourself... Um, have with your higher self, a deepening of that relationship, a deepening of that relationship. It's not always another person. And like I was saying at the beginning, deepening your relationship, going into your shadow side and really coming clean with that is also about deepening your relationship with yourself. All right, next, we're gonna go to the clear audience card. Okay, that was this guy right here, okay. And this guy is Archangel Zadkiel. And you can always call these angels by their name into your life. I'm gonna read to you by clear audience. Oh, opened right to it, how about that? Okay, put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Notice the loving guidance you hear inside your mind or from other people. Like I said, it can come from anyone. You're hearing true divine guidance very clearly right now. It comes in the form of repetitious messages urging you to improve a situation for yourself or others. Pay close attention to everything you hear in your mind and with your physical ears. Divine directives are repetitious. They're loving and to the point. 
Ask me for help. That's Zadkiel. Ask him for help if you need clarification on anything you hear. Zadkiel's aura is a deep indigo blue. When you wear the mineral lapis lazuli, you may feel a closer connection to Zadkiel. Hold this stone above your eyebrows to awaken your ear chakras and to clear so that you can hear the voice of the divine. Okay? So, messages are coming all the time. Don't discount them. If you have a feeling about something, you have a flash about something, you're hearing the words in your head, don't discount it. It's not an accident. Remember, they're always loving, always loving messages, okay? Lastly, last card is this one, apologize. Okay, I opened just right to it. Again, all right, apologize. This card asks you to take the high road in this situation. And apologize to either the people involved, if applicable, or yourself for the things that have been bothering you. Your honesty and fiery indigo nature may inadvertently lead you to say things that might hurt others' feelings. Saying that you're sorry is one of the best ways to let the pressure off yourself and diffuse tension. Even if you perceive that you've done nothing wrong, the angels ask you to apologize in general for any disappointment or frustration that arose. Be sure to have an honest discussion with yourself or the other person about the underlying feelings that led to the conflict. The angels certainly don't want you to cover up your true emotions. Know that while saying you're sorry, <gasps> excuse me, may not be easy or even seem fair to you, in this situation, it's being asked of you because it serves a higher purpose. This is a lesson for you to put aside your pride and do something for the greater good. Apologize to yourself. My eyes are watering. Ugh. Apologize to yourself for some of the things you've said recently or the behavior you've, you've done and exhibited recently. Apologize to yourself for not being coming from your highest in every situation. I mean, we're human, you can't come from your highest in every single situation. So maybe you've said something inappropriate or you behaved in a way that you don't really find flattering. It doesn't really fit who you think you are. Apologize to yourself for exhibiting that behavior and learn from the lessons, learn from it. Learn from what you experience. That's what it's about, people. It's about learning. Learning and fine-tuning, it's like we're all diamonds in the rough, okay? And it's like fine-tuning the diamond. So it's almost like if you have a diamond, it looks like this, and the top of it is flat, and it's got all these different facets, right? So we're refining ourselves in that we're clearing away the film so that light can reflect out of all of those facets, okay? So it's all about refining. It takes a lifetime to do it. That's why we have a lifetime. Some of us have shorter lifetimes than others. Sometimes it can be refined in a short period of life. And sometimes a short life can help someone who's still here refine themselves because the person that they loved had a short life. <sighs> I've been hearing about a lot of people transitioning lately. Every day it's somebody else. It's pretty incredible. We're all going down that road, you know. We're all gonna be transitioning. We act like we're not, but we are. We all are. I really like that allegory of, you know, the ship. I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's kind of like we're standing on the shore and the ship is large and the ship starts to drift away. This is the metaphor for a person drifting away and it goes further and further and further, and then, then it's like out of reach, and we, we kind of can't see it anymore, and we're so sad that it's gone, that that person is gone. And on the other shore, there are people who are so happy that the ship is coming closer and closer and closer, and then it's there, and everyone is rejoicing. So that's kind of what happens when a person leaves the body, when a person transitions, is they leave this dimension, and they travel to another one, 
I myself seem to like the allegory of it's like they're in another room. Because I, you know, people that have passed away that are close to me, like the man that I was married to for a long time and knew for 50 years, um, actually um, just had an anniversary of his transition, the first anniversary. And I hear his voice all the time. It's like he's in the next room and he shows me signs and symbols. I know he's around and he's guiding me. He's protecting me. He wants the best for me. So, and also other people that have passed away that I've been close to. My stepfather's another one. I just feel that if you keep your eyes open for the signs, you get them and you see them. And it's not wishful thinking. There are things that have happened in this house and things that have happened to me that are beyond logical explanation. They just are impossible things that could not have happened, and yet they did. And they make absolutely no sense, but there's no denying that it happened. A lot of them I have on camera. It's just pretty incredible. So anyway, they're always with us, and they let us know through signs and symbols. Now, how people communicate with us when they have passed away are through sight, you might see something out of the corner of your eye. You might see something that you read that reminds you that feels like it's a message. Hearing, you'll hear something in your head, you'll hear their voice, you'll hear, you're, you'll hear, the, hear their laughter, you're, you'll hear them say something. Um, uh, auditory, smell, smell is another one. You may smell them or smell something that reminds you of them or smell something, you know, maybe you miss your, a loved one and that loved one, your grandmother or your mother or your aunt always made chocolate chip cookies and you smell chocolate chip cookies and there aren't any around. So you know that that is them. They're speaking to you because that was something special that they did that you loved and they know that. So that's how they let you know, hey, still here. Uh, okay, so we have um, we have hearing, we have uh, smell, uh, touch. You will feel something touch you, whether it's a cold breeze or you will feel warmth and heat or almost like someone's hand is on your shoulder. So there's touch. And then, of course, sight. So you'll see something. You'll see like a holographic image of them or you'll see something that reminds you of them or something like that. So hearing, smelling, touching, seeing, what's the other one? Tasting, okay? So these are all ways that you can be communicated with from the other side. They use frequency to communicate with us. And all these things have frequency. Smell is a frequency. Vision is a frequency. You know, when you're in the desert, you see the hologram. You're in the desert, you see the mirage. You know, that's a sight thing, okay? And I, you know, I, I've seen almost like a, a mirage kind of wavy image of, of him standing, you know, right here, right? I've got a giant angel here. She's like, I don't know, four feet tall or something. Uh, I, saw him right, I saw him right in front of her, standing right in front of her. I wasn't imagining it. <laughs> I mean, I kept blinking my eyes, like, is this really happening? And it was, it was like a mirage kind of thing, like, like wavy, like, like, you know, a piercing the veil of the dimensions somehow. So anyway, you know, if someone you know has passed away, and I know a lot of you have someone who has, and it doesn't matter how long ago they passed away, you know, you can, you can smell the chocolate chip cookies your grandmother cooked for you 45 years ago. And no, that it's grandma saying hello. Anyway, you'll see what I mean. Keep your eyes and ears open always for everything. That's the key. Be consciously aware of everything going on around you. And of course, the God card. What's your vision? Imagination is a preview of life's coming attractions. That means if your imagination is making up stories of gloom and doom and what might happen if this, that, or the other thing happens, if I, oh, I don't know, I was talking to someone recently. If I don't get hired at this job, I could lose my house. And then if I lose my house, what am I going to do? And then if I, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that is your vision creating a story that may not happen. 
Or the other situation I told you about, the person that consulted me about the dilemma of having these inklings that maybe they shouldn't be getting married right now. So it was kind of like, well, if I don't do this, then will I ever find somebody else? Or am I doing the wrong thing? And what if I make a wrong mistake? What if I make a mistake? And then the person is not available to me anymore that I'm moving away from. And I said, stop making up stories. All you're doing is using your imagination to create scenarios that are not pleasant. Use your vision in here, your internal vision, to create scenarios that are positive for you. Use your head. Use your head. Use your head. Use your head. Jefferson Airplane. So, use your head. Okay. It's time to go into our meditation right now. And so, I'm going to look at the clock so I can write it in the description. And we're going to start shortly. Like now. All right, so we're going to go into the guided meditation part right now. What I suggest you do is make yourself comfortable and make sure your back is straight. And you will notice that when I start going into trance, my voice begins to change. Any outside sounds that you become aware of that you recognize as everyday normal sounds, those sounds do not disturb you. Instead, they allow you to go even deeper into your own world within. Take a few moments to get yourself situated. Know that you can move your body in any way you like as your body may need to shift a bit to release any energies of the day or evening. Lying down may be very comfortable for you and very helpful. If you should fall asleep, do not worry. Do not be concerned. Anything that is said that resonates with your belief system <coughs> will go into your subconscious mind and begin to be activated, effective immediately. or in the very near future. Many people find that they do fall asleep listening to the meditation part of the video and audio. And that is totally okay. That is just your body needing to do that so that what is being said can go into your subconscious mind without your conscious mind filtering it out. Allow whatever is going to happen to happen. It will all happen for your greatest good, highest evolution, and deepest involvement. Allow your eyes to close now that you are situated. Notice your breathing is beginning to change. You're starting to breathe from your abdomen. You're starting to breathe diaphragmatically. Your abdomen goes out when you inhale and deflates when you exhale. That's it. You may want to pit one of your hands on your abdomen <clears throat> to kinesthetically feel this happening with the inhalation the stomach abdomen diaphragm expands if you're lying down it's upward if you're sitting it's outward And when you exhale, your abdomen, your stomach, your diaphragm deflates. 
If you're sitting up, it goes in. If you're lying down, it goes down. And this happens naturally, easily, and gently, without you doing anything about it, without you pushing. This is a very natural state that your body creates to put you into a parasympathetic mode, allowing your nervous system to relax, recalibrate, decompress, reorganize, regenerate, and renew. Letting go more and more now, allowing yourself to feel more and more comfortable as you go deeper and deeper. As I count from five down to zero, each count takes you deeper and deeper. Starting on the count of five, as the body continues to relax more and more, all tension melting away, all pain melting away. As you come down to four, all tightness melting away, all worries and concerns melting away. Coming down to three, all pressure melting away. All worries melting away. All concerns melting away. Going even deeper, down to two. Letting go more and more. Allowing your body to do what it naturally wants to do, which is let go completely. Let go completely. Coming down to one. Relaxing even more into that daydreamy kind of sensation. Naturally, easily, safely, and effectively. In a moment, going from one down to zero, allowing the tones that you hear to take you even deeper still to the appropriate, perfect level for you to go to at this time. Drifting from one down to zero. <sighs> Going even deeper still. Letting go, letting go. There is nothing you have to do. There is nowhere you have to be. Right here, right now, 
this is the perfect moment as you go even deeper. As you drift and float and go deeper and deeper, your mind becomes more and more open to information that may be coming through me to you and resonating with your higher self and what is best for you. You are becoming more and more aware now of what you see and hear and feel and sense in your environment. You are more and more aware and tuned into gifts, opportunities, invitations, suggestions, and guidance that seems to come out of nowhere. You are feeling very creative right now. And you are allowing that creativity to just flow out of you. You have been working hard and you will continue to work hard at your earth trip, your craft, your job, your career your creative endeavors. It is paying off and it will continue to do so. It is also important to balance that hard work with joyful activity, celebratory activity, dancing, singing, enjoying the company of friends, This is a time of balance, creating balance in your life. The equinox is equal light and dark. We are in Libra, moving into Scorpio, which is more of a dark time. This is a time for you to balance your work with pleasure time. Balance your light with the embraceable darkness, the parts of yourself you have cast off and projected onto others so you can criticize them and blame them. Take it back and make yourself whole. Embrace it and clean it up. Relationships are important right now. Keep your eyes and ears open to your relationships, your personal intimate relationships, and your work relationships. And most importantly, your relationship with yourself. That is the primary relationship of your life. That is the most important relationship you have. If your relationship with yourself is not good, your relationship with anyone else will not be either. Listen to the messages you are given, whether they come to you internally in your mind, in a voice that is a familiar voice to you, in your own voice, or whether they come to you from someone actually on the earth plane that you casually come across, a friend, or someone you don't even know in a casual situation.
messages can also come to you through frequency. Something you come across on the internet that resonates with you. A song that seems to come on in your car that resonates with you. A song that you hear that resonates with you, that you hear live, that someone is singing casually as they walk by you. It's all there for you, all messages for you. Apologize to yourself for some of your recent behaviors. Anything you said inappropriately, any slander, any blame, anything you may have done that hasn't been the highest vibrational frequency. Give yourself a break. Just learn from it and move forward. Use the power of your mind for your internal vision of what you want to happen. Your imagination is a preview of life's coming attractions. Don't let your imagination show you the coming attractions of movies you don't want in your life. Use your power of imagination for your best and most positive outcome. Your divine heritage is to be happy, healthy, and joyful feeling loved, expressing love, and sharing love. And going deep, buddy. feeling more and more powerful now. The sound is tuned to your solar plexus chakra. That is your power chakra. Own your power. Do not give it away to others. Find the balance in your power so that you use it in a positive manner, not to overpower others, but to empower yourself. Thank you for joining me in this dimension. I wish you great joy and many blessings. I wish you great balance, happiness, health, prosperity. Namaste.